Welcome to my sustainability journey. My name is Craig and I'm on a mission to live a more sustainable urban lifestyle through the likes of urban homesteading. If this is the first time you are here, welcome. I hope you get to learn plenty of awesome things. If you are returning, thank you so much. You are awesome and your support is, as always, greatly, greatly appreciated. I'm standing in front of a recently pruned pear tree and that's what this video is about. The seasons have changed, the trees are coming alive, and now's the time we need to give them a little haircut so that we can get the structure right for incredible future growth. In this video, I'm going to be pruning a whole bunch of trees with you. So you can skip through the chapters. I will label what type of trees they are. So please use the chapters so that you don't feel like you have to watch through the whole thing. But we're gonna open up with a little bit of theory so that you know some of the core things when it comes to pruning your fruit trees the right way. I'm standing in front of a Packham pear that looks like it has been attacked by a ball of string. <laughs> and that is actually correct. It was semi-attacked by a ball of string. And this is to lay the foundation and structurally place the branches where we want them to be at the correct angles. If you haven't watched this video, I will tag it for you. It talks about the angles and how you can use these pieces of string to get the foundation right. But what are some of the things you need to know so that you don't set your tree back when trying to set it up for the future? Number one, the most important thing you need to know is to know where the color of the branch is. Why is this so important? Because if you get to the cut wrong and you cut too close to the stem of the tree and you cut the collar, that branch wound is not going to heal over. Then what you're going to end up with is decaying wood that's going into the stem. You're going to get die back and potentially even that branch snapping. Knowing where the collar is, is the single most important thing you need to know about pruning your trees. And how do you know what the collar is? Well, if you follow the stem, the, the trunk line, at each branch node, you will see there's a couple of lines. It almost looks like at the joint of the branch to the stem, it almost looks like they're wrinkles. And just past the wrinkled little line section, the branch will become smooth. Now that little wrinkled section is the collar. And that collar is filled with a whole bunch of hormones and fixing things that as soon as the tree is damaged, cut, pruned, these little cells spring into action and they grow really quickly and close over. I think one of the most majestic examples of this are oak trees. Oak trees lose limbs and you see that thick lip that starts forming over the damaged section. Now that is because of the color which then starts growing. If you cut it too close to the tree and you damage that collar, you, the, the tree no longer has the ability to be able to fix that wound. So rule of thumb is a centimeter. So if I were to cut this branch, I would be cutting it in the middle of the first node. The first node is over here. There's the branch. I'd cut it in the middle. I'm not going to cut this branch, <laughs> but I would cut it there and you would see there's still a little stub left over there. This can then naturally die back. The next thing we're talking about are cut angles and bud location. Why is this so important? Well, we are winter pruning to form and create structure. So we need to know where to cut at what angle to improve the structure, not set it back. What I mean by that is, if you ever look at this cut over here, it is 45 degrees to the angle of the branch. What that means is the auxins and the hormones are being centered around this corner over here which is the tip and just below the tip is a bud that's the bud i want to stimulate to grow and this brings me into the angles and the bud locations so you can see maybe you can't i'll i'll bring you close so you can see there's a bud on the very top over here now if i were to cut here, this bud is going to go straight up. Pear tree, this is also a pear tree. 
pear trees have a tendency to go vertical. So if you cut it at the wrong location, you got this nice 45 degree angled branch, which you are now sending into a vertical. You've just lost a whole bunch of good work because now you're going to have to tie down that branch again. You're going to lose a whole season. You're going to have to cut it back aggressively. But if you cut it on the bottom outward facing node, this branch is now going to grow that way. It's not going to grow inwards and up. It's going to grow outwards and up, naturally supporting the angle of the branch. You could then tie it back down and you would continue that growth. So if we have a look at this bud over here, or this, this pruned branch, you can see the 45 degree cut over there. All the hormones will be on this corner. There's the bud over there. So this one is going to grow that way. This one's going to grow that way. And what you will find is when you come and summer prune, you would be summer pruning any of these inside ones that are growing either in or up. The same applies for directional pruning. And for directional pruning, I actually want to bring you onto the pear tree next to me because that is a really good example. Now what we have here with directional pruning is this is a straight branch that I have bent using that technique with the string. And to show you how effective it is, let me remove this piece. And you see how that branch has now stayed in that position. You can see it has lifted a little bit, so I'm going to continue to keep this on. But it's creating a lovely shape. This branch was going straight and it had a, a long tip. I've pruned it back. But I've pruned it back to an outside facing branch, which means I need to change direction. Why? Because I have a branch down here that's going to fill this space. So I don't want this branch to fill in this space. There's nothing over here. So I want this branch to fill up some of that space. In that case, you can selectively choose your buds. There's equally a bud over here where if I were to cut it over here at a 45 degree angle, it would go out in that direction towards you. Very much like this branch. If I wanted it to go towards me, there's a bud right behind it. I would cut it over here and I would create the branch over here. If I wanted both, then I would cut it and I would allow both. I would allow both to grow. So knowing where to cut, where your buds are, are crucially important in determining future structure, direction of the branches, but also, and more importantly, is eliminating poor growth with verticals. An example here is if I were to cut this back to this point over here, there is a bud at the top right there. I cut it here because I want to shorten the branch. This bud is going to go at this angle because it's a pear tree, it's got vertical growth. And then I'm back to square one of all of this work that I've put in, taking that off, getting the branch into the correct structure is gone where you can see this branch, as soon as it's gray, is going to continue at that angle. And I've worked on my structure. Same over here. Here's the branch going. I have pruned this one on the outside, and I will be bringing you in close for these to the outside, because I want this branch to come out towards me over here. I could equally have cut it on the inside and allowed the branch to go there. But I don't. I want an equal split of these branches coming out. So, cutting at the correct angle to concentrate the hormones in the, the tip of where the bud is, is number one. Number two is choosing the location of the bud so that you get the correct growth in the correct place. That is theory for pruning. From this video done, let's cut some trees. So the very first tree we're going to be cutting is this Packham pear. We need to bring it back and we need to select some of the branches because there are too many. Now, what I want to do for the first round is show you this branch over here because you can see it is just too long. Now, understanding the growth in terms of years is also important. So I can see this piece of wood all the way to here is the same color this is last year's growth. So this piece was way more aggressive than this piece. And there are just too many buds here. So what I want to do is one, two, three, four, five, six. I generally want to try and stick to five buds. 
But what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this branch or this piece of string just one back. And this branch for me is too long. So I'm going to cut it back to five. But now remember what I spoke about in terms of the node and bud placement. The fifth bud is at the bottom here, which in this instance is going to give me a downward branch, which I don't want. This one is slightly too facing towards you which is okay now just on the tip of it is another branch going this way so what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut in the direction of the bud the bud is facing this way so i'm going to cut this way as well at a 45 degree angle about half a centimeter above it and i've taken that off now i'll just move this piece of string back you can see i'm continuing that structure now what's going to happen is this branch can go there, that one can go there, and now I have a choice. I've also stimulated the buds towards the back so that there can be some, hopefully some fruiting buds that appear over there. Then what we have is over here, we have two branches competing for the same space. Now I want to keep these two because they're opposites. And I want to keep this one up here because it's taking up the space. So I need to decide which of these two. Now, space-wise, it would make sense to... What would make sense here? I'm going to get rid of the bottom one over here because there's another branch very close to it. So I'm going to just take the tag off. And remember what I said about the collar? This is where it comes into play. So I'm going to leave a little stub, cut that, and now it has some room to breathe. And I'll slip this onto another branch. Now if we go to the, the next branch, this one I'm also going to move backwards a bit. And by count, the one, two, three, four, five is a bottom facing bud. Don't want that. I'm going to, the sixth one is a straight up bud. Don't want that. So I'm actually going to go back to the fourth bud here. And I'm cutting back to old wood just purely because last year's growth was so bad. It's probably because I potted it, put it into the pot. It had some time to acclimatize, which means its growth wasn't great. So I'm going to cut it over there. And now I'm going to have this branch take up this space, which I am more than happy with. I look at this one right in front of you. This one has a really nice bud at the top here, which is one, two, three, four, fifth bud. Perfect. So I'm going to snip that one over there. This one I'm probably going to tighten up a bit. And remember, I'm tightening this to get the angle right because I want it to be as close to 45 degrees as possible. Okay, there you can see that nice little angle. Then I've got this one in front, which I am going to... Yeah. And I'm going to do exactly the same. I'm going to bring it down, retie it to get the correct angles. Then this little one over here, I'm probably going to lose it. And I actually am going to lose it. There we go. Because this branch is going to take up this space, this one, this space, this one, this space. Cool. That is how we think. There's this branch over here. There's, I'm just going to take a little bit off the tip. That one I'm not too phrased about because it still has to grow out nicely. Um, so that's all for this tree here. I'm going to continue with the, the top a little bit later. But I do want to get through some other trees as to not completely bore you. I'm not going to lie. I have been waiting a really long time to prune this Anna apple. It is such a beautiful tree. It has blossoms everywhere but it needs some work so talking you through my thinking right at the bottom over here i don't think you can see it is a really nice branch and it has a nice king bloom that's opening it's just too close to the ground that one's going to come off i don't think you can see that one that one's staying up here is where we need to make some big decisions and why we need to make these big decisions is there's a lot of competition happening here this tree I want as a modified upright. I don't want a vase structure on this tree. And what we have is, in essence, a competing branch to the main stem. It's actually higher. 
It's roughly the same thickness. So we need to do something with this. And I don't want to lose it because it's such a nice branch. So I'm going to bring it down, but I need to shorten it significantly. So I'm going to go by the five bud rule again. Um, and because it's so long, I'm going to remove last year's growth again. So I'm going to look one, two, three, four, five. This one, once again, I'm going to push to six because five is going to put a branch this direction. And there's already one here. I need want the branch to go out that direction to take up a little bit of that space. 45 degree cut, the same angle as the bud. Whole bunch of cutting gone. Now I will take the same string methodology, bring this branch down completely. And you can see I suddenly don't have a competing branch for the main stem. That being said, it makes me very, very sad to have to get rid of such a beautiful branch with so many flowers. But this branch at the top is, you can see they are parallel. And I need to choose. And we have a branch here that I've just cut. And this one is right next to it, which is not great because it can form a knuckle and it, you're busy splitting up nutrients. So I am going to remember the color, remember the spacing. Ah, I hate doing this. I'll never get over having to cut such a beautiful branch away. But there's a branch here. This one's going to take its place. That one's going in there. This one's going in there. They all have their place. Now, if we have a look at the very top over here, you can see we have one, two, three branches. And we need to choose because otherwise this plant is not going to know what to do, who's going to be the leader. So I'm going to keep this little one on the side because it's going to go down as a side branch. And I am going to choose one of these two. And the branch was cut to create a modified central leader and it's going towards you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the branch which is coming towards me. So we can counteract that going one year going this way, the next year going that way. So bearing in mind colors, I'm going to remove that one. And now we have a single stem going up. And I'm also going to just top it. And it doesn't really matter where at this point, just to get the, the flow of hormones back down the tree. Now, if we have a look at this one over here, which is facing you, I'm going to go down the same five node methodology. So we've got one, two, three, four, five and then i'm going to go one further just because it's a better placement over there and now we've got a branch going over there yes this is a beautiful cluster of flowers remember this is still a relatively young tree and i am not pruning this tree for massive production this little twiggly branch <laughs> can't handle a cluster of apples so there is a flower cluster there there is another one there that'll become a vegetative bud so maybe i can have one apple on this the, this branch this year but i'm setting the foundation for all of these buds in future to bear fruit so this already looks so much better bought in tucked in nicely so the branches can get nice and strong let's go look at some peaches if you watched my previous video, which is how to find the perfect fruit tree, you would have seen these two fruit trees featured in those. And now it's time to prune them. This one has been winter tipped, but there are some improvements we can do here. The main improvement being, oh, sorry, this branch is way too long with no side branch. So we need to sort that one out. So let's do this one first. So what we want to do here is we want to encourage splitting of the primary stem a little bit further down because this is going to be in an urban space. So we want it to be more compact and we want to allow this tree to be able to have more branches in a small amount of time so we can get a greater harvest. So if we have a look at this one as an example, this branch down at the bottom, this shouldn't be there is growing and is growing and it's got a straight straight growing tip and we need to break this one out so if we look here there's a split 
there's a branch coming towards me and there's a branch going out there. This is the perfect place because if we keep this, this branch is just going to keep going longer, keep going longer. The main stem of this branch is not going to get thicker because it's just got one. As soon as we have two branches, it's going to get thicker because there's more flow of nutrients, water, all of that. So we're going to give that one a cut. You can see we now have a branch coming this way, a branch coming that way, and now we've got a really good structured tree. It's going to snip that tip off. The same applies to this side. Now I want to have my branches coming from roughly the same height. So if I look over here, I need to look at creating a split somewhere here. And right over there, I have a bud that's already in leaf going out that way. And right behind it, we have a bud coming this way. This is the perfect spot. So I'm going to give that one to cut. And yes, this sucks so bad like i said we are pruning for future production not now and then you will see this branch over here now this branch is technically busy growing inside it's not facing out where so we need to remove that because we want to keep the inside of this tree as open as possible same applies for this little one over here these, this one is at about the same height as that, so we don't need to worry about that one. This branch underneath, we have a split over here. We don't want this branch to end up competing with these two, but this is a really good possible future fruit branch. So I'm going to snip it back, shorten it. There's a bud over here, which means it can grow. We want these two to go up. This one can go down and up, so we'll keep that one. The same applies over here, we'll shorten it because we can keep it as a fruit bearing branch and exactly the same over here. Snip that and then this branch we're going to train down and you can see we have a beautiful vase structure. I'm going to lift this one up so you can see a bit more. There's some branches further down the stem and this is where we have our split. So these all need to come off including those buds. Now we've got a nice clean trunk and a nice beautiful clean middle center. That's that one. And remember, this one we're pruning for an open vase shape. Now looking at the next one, this one, we are not pruning for an open vase shape. We're pruning for more of a vertical tree with branches on either side. So if we have a look at the front, we have a huge cluster. We have one, two, three, four. I need to choose one. I am going to choose the one that has the least of an angle going up because it's relatively straight, which is the middle one. And if you watched the previous video, you would have seen how I got to that decision. So it, snipping that one off, snipping this one off, and then this is a dead branch. So we can snip that one off. And there we have a new center, new upright leader. And right on the tip of, the, of this branch are flower buds. And that doesn't mean anything good because if that does pollinate, that's what's going to happen to our leader. At the back here, we can see vegetative buds. So I'm going to prune back to a vegetative bud and then it can continue growing upright. Then we have the rest of the tree. So what we want to look for here is a ladder system. One, two, three, one, two, three. So that over time, when that branch gets big and starts drooping, what we want to end up with is branches occupying different spaces. We never want two branches to end up on top of each other. So that's what we are looking for over here. Now, these two are in a good position. This one, is not because here's one that's going in exactly the same direction as that. So I'm going to remove that one and I'm going to let this one take up that space. Further up over here, I have another one coming out over there, which is all good. Then I have this one in hmm, taking up a bit of a competing space. So ultimately the one towards you over there 
It's going to go straight towards you. This one behind it is going to go angle towards me. And then this one is going to take, go that way. Which means I am going to, let's just have a look here. I'm going to take out that one because I have a branch up here, which would have been exactly the same space, probably about 15 centimeters apart. This one is dead. That one is dead, but there is a little vegetative bud right over there. So I'm going to keep that one because that's a really good branch placement. And this one is also dead. And I can actually just break it. It's right near the collar, so it doesn't really matter. And that's all I'm going to do on this tree. I'm going to allow these branches I've selected to grow out, thicken out, and over time, I might lose some of these branches that I've just chosen, but at least they're there. I can't put back something I've removed. So if I'm not sure about a branch, I'll always leave it, wait until the next season and see what it does. And then the final tree of today's video is this perfect pair that I showed you about that had two choices. It could either go vertical or it could go vase. Now for me, I'm going to go vertical because in this urban space, I don't necessarily want a whole bunch of trees going sideways. They just take up too much space. So for some of you, this is going to be cringeworthy, but sit tight. We're going to do it. <laughs> we're going to get rid of these beautiful three limbs and we're going to allow the top to go. So remember where the collar is, cut it, <laughs> cut it, and then I'm going to put the label somewhere else, and another cut, and now we can let this one go, that one, that one, and now an interesting one is right up at the top here, we have another competing leader. You can see there's the official leader, and then this one right next to it is busy competing and in this instance because i want more of a vertical tree i'm going to keep the more dominant one get rid of that one and there we go we have already a nicely structured tree i'm going to clear out this one because it's competing with the bottom and these branches to be honest are not going to mean much right now because the future structure it's still going to happen once I tip the top of this tree, probably in summer. We're going to stimulate all the buds going down the trunk, which are going to bring out all the branches. So for now, we are pruning this tree for vertical growth, which means over the next probably two to three years, we'll look at structure, structurally pruning this pear tree a little bit more. So I just want to thank you for taking the time to watch this pruning video with me. I hope you have a little bit more knowledge when it comes to winter pruning your fruit trees, how to approach it, how the thinking works when you are working through a tree bottom up. If you have any questions about pruning, if you have any examples you want to share with me, pop me a DM over on my Facebook page. I'll happily give you some advice with pruning. Also, just drop any comments in the chat in the chat below and I, as usual, will get back to you. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, please comment, leave your thoughts of what you thought about this video. Also, you can buy me a coffee below. I love my coffees and every little bit of support goes a long way for this channel. Thanks again for watching and I hope to see you in my next video.